love the Lord. And listen, I, I really do hope you sang of the goodness of God this morning. And you sang out of a heart that is recognizing that God has been good to you way better, way better than any of us deserve. Uh, and, and I'm grateful for that. I woke up this morning, I thought about how good God has actually been to me and how thankful I am that God extended grace when I deserved judgment. And I'm grateful for that. I hope you are. I hope that you are standing in the place where you understand how real the grace of God is in your life. This morning, I want us to pray. I want to, I want to ask God to bless this morning and everything surrounding all the things that we're going to do. Uh, obviously, you can see that Brother Dylan and Miss Tori, uh, they brung eight or ten households with them. And, uh, and, and hey, we're grateful for it, but... Uh, I don't even know that I know that many people, and uh, so, but but I but I am grateful that they're here with us, and uh, it does it does testify their love for them, and how special they are to them, and uh, we all know how special they are to us. But it is good to see families rally around one another and and be here for one another, and, and I'm grateful for that. So let's pray this morning. Let's ask God to bless the service. Uh, Thomas, why don't you pray for us? Why don't you open us up, there, brother?
standing here I'm taking it as a church we've forgotten how bad we really were when God saved us I was singing that verse and I'm thinking I remember I remember how bad I really was and I remember the work that there was nothing that any human being could do in my life it had to come from a holy God that loved me Love me enough to send a son for me, and he loved me enough to give me a word that I could know him better. Right on. And I think we forget all that. 
I think we forget how bad we really were and where we were when he came looking for us. And we just, you know, praise God, we go to church, everything's all right. No, man, we ought to be shouting the roof off of this building at just the fact that he saved us. Don't even count anything else that he's ever done for us. We're going to sing this verse again. Y'all worship this morning. Y'all think about where you were when the Lord saved you and what he brought you out of. Yes, there's been days when I have failed you. Lord, you know the many times I've gone astray. Listen and pay attention to the words of this song as you sing it this morning. It's, uh, this song cuts me to the quick because just what I just said, if, if we look at just the Lord saving our soul and nothing else, we've got enough to shout till he comes back about. Y'all listen to the words and worship the Lord. Yeah. 
I want you to turn around and tell somebody hello, and you're glad to see them this morning. All right, well, um, before we jump into um, to preaching, um, we, we, are going to, we are going to dedicate this morning uh, Tori and Dylan Brown's newest child to the Lord, and uh, man, we're grateful for them. Um, y'all, I was sitting here thinking after I kind of went back and seen who all was here. I, I was thinking this morning before uh, we were going to do this, I, I knew there were going to be at least three generations, and uh, but but we're, we're we're at four now, right? Ain't that right? Okay. Um, you know, I I got to you know I got to thinking uh, about Proverbs seventeen six. And it, it, it says, children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of the father of the children are their fathers. I just, you know, I got kind of thinking about that this morning, how much more special it is uh, to have great-grandparents here. And, uh, man, it is, it is truly a blessing. Uh, you say, what is a baby dedication? Uh, and, and for those of you that may not know, you're just, maybe you're new to the whole church thing. There's a lot of people here. Uh, that are like that, and uh, and the reason and the the illustration we get from uh, from dedicating children to the Lord, obviously we get it from Hannah, and uh, and then we pick it back up in the book of Luke, in chapter number two, when the Lord is dedicated, when the Lord is given back, when the Lord is, when when Jesus Christ is presented to the Lord. And so this morning, all, all we're doing is, is really a charge. And we're going to charge the parents and, and those that are going to be involved in raising this child and, and, 
and that's that's definitely grandparents and uh, sisters and you know aunts and uncles and everything in between, and and then it's going to extend down to us as a church, as the body of Christ, who we are in terms of raising these children and helping parents raise their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I think a lot of times we forget that little things that even in in the nursery when we take time in the nursery to sing songs with kids about the Lord, to tell them Bible stories. I think sometimes Awana gets overlooked as a ministry that is just there to fill time or watch kids. In actuality, they are, they are facilitating a need and in, in helping, helping parents raise their kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so today, we're just here. We're coming, and we're going to make a, a promise before the Lord. We're going to do our best. And listen, for those of you in this room that, that have never thought about that, I, I'm encouraging you to think about it this morning. If you're a part of Greater Hope Baptist Church, to think about what you do in your service, even to the, our kids. How many of you ever heard the, uh, the old saying, you know, it, it takes a village to raise a kid? Man, it takes a church collectively getting together. And understanding that we're all headed to the judgment seat of Christ. And what we do here in this church with these children, how many of you have seen there's a lot of kids around here? Anybody see that besides me? And, and, and there's a lot of them that are not even here this morning. Uh, there, there's two families that are not here this morning. I was, I was thinking in my mind of all the kids this morning, and, and there, there's a couple families that are not here. There's kids all over this place, and it is a blessing. God has blessed our church with with some youth, and we're grateful for that, but we have an obligation to raise those kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So as a church, collectively, church, I want you uh, to understand your role in this, to understand that you play a part in this just as much as those parents do in terms of when we're here in the world, and when you're out in the world, your testimony matters. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let, let, let's do this, uh, uh, Brother Dylan and Ms. Tori, you guys, you come on up here, and then any of the family that wants to come, um, you, you guys can come, grandparents, great-grandparents. I know, I, I know Misty's coming. Y'all might as well just come on. If you want to come, you might as well just come on. about that all right yeah I, I figured we'd have like you, you said we I figured we'd have a full house uh, but in, in a, it's cool no no biggie um, again we understand what the Lord has called us to and you guys understand what the Lord's called you to obviously you've already got two girls that I believe you're raising in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and obviously, um, is he going to cry? <laughs> he cries. He cries at Dylan sometimes. Yeah, he 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 cries with Dylan. And I'm just. Do we need this? Let's do this. That that may help me out. There we go. Yeah, may help me out a little bit. I've been holding these footballs for years right here, so. I was actually, the last time Jordan was holding, I had a little twinkle in my eye for a minute of another child. And, and then Jordan said, don't, don't even. I, I said, well, there's, I mean, there's like thousands of little Malalians that need to come to America. She's like, no, no, we're done. We're done, brother. We're all done. So... Um, but we understand that there is, a, there is a, a great need in our day for parents that, number one, just believe the Bible. We're, we're, not talk, we're, not, we're not talking about just church. We're not talking about just coming to church and going through the religious aspects of church. It's, it's a good thing. We all think church is a good thing, right? 
But we understand that even greater need is for, the, for us to be grounded in the word of God and it be our sole authority for what we do in this life. And so I, I have full confidence in these, uh, that they're, they're doing that, that they're raising their kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And just, just I'm, I'm sure you two have already done this, but you two have already came and surrendered everything you had to raise your kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, right? Um, it is a father raising a, a raising a young man. He's going to need a father. Uh, and, and obviously, I, I've told you many times, I admire, greatly admire what you and your dad have. And I, I'm praying for the same thing for this one. Um, that you that he looks at you like you look at him. And, and, and hey, my, my hat's off to you. Uh, because it does me a world of good to see that there's, man, there's still some in this world that are trusting the Lord with their kids and doing what's right in the sight of God and, and having a relationship such as they have in terms of, of just discipleship in general. And so, uh, as they've already surrendered their lives to the Lord and surrendered their lives to raising this kid in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, uh, how, many, how many of you promise in this church to be actively involved in helping them and reinforcing the things of God and the word of God in their life on a consistent basis, not contradicting them in how they raise their kids in terms of what the Bible says about raising your children. How many of you promise to do that in this church? Amen? Listen, this is, this, this is, we, believe that, we believe that we are we are the body of Christ, right? We believe that in this church. And so as a local New Testament body of Christ, we want to make sure that we do the things that God's called us to do as the body of Christ. Uh, we'll pray, and, um, and we'll ask God to, to bless this child's life as, as well as the parent. All right? You got it. You, you hold him. I'm going to pray with you. It's already started, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even make the full transfer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the opportunity, Lord, just to know Dylan and Tori and who they are, uh, Lord, to understand their hearts and their, their willingness to serve you in all that they do in ministry. God, thank you for what they do in this church and who they are, Lord, those that they disciple. God, those that, that they lead, my kids that they lead in, in the youth group, Lord, I, I, I could never thank you enough for what you've given me and them. Lord, I pray that you give them the strength, the desire, the will to never let out, never let up, God, to raise their kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Not as a show of good works, but because they have lived it out every single day. And out of the overflow, they're raising their kids. Lord, I pray for these grandparents that are stand by. God, as they make a commitment as well, that they will not that they will not come by and contradict anything that these parents have instilled from the word of God in their own kids. And God, that, that you help them to, to encourage and reinforce what they're doing. Lord, I know this is a tight family. God, I know that they love each other. God, I pray that you help them to love each other more. Lord, thank you for what they have in the gospel. Thank you for the fact that they love each other because you first loved them. Lord, I pray that you give them a, a good a good time together this afternoon, and God, that you bless them. God, use this place for your honor and your glory in the life of McLean. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Let's give them a hand. Hey, Dylan, take that with you, bro. Hey, I'll forget it if you don't. All right. Uh, take your Bible to Galatians chapter number 2. Galatians chapter number 2.
Why, why wasn't they up here? Y'all are family. And I expected a load of commotion, way more than what I got. Um, I kind of thrive off that just a little bit. When kids mess everything up, and, uh, and I'm rather sad they didn't do that. Funny, we put every, we make everything just so so, and then you can let a kid a kid will ruin everything in in two seconds flat, and uh, and I'm not even mad about it anymore. Five kids later, I'm like, yeah, they're supposed to do that. It's just it's just part of being a parent uh, at this point. Um, Galatians chapter number two. I, I know it's going to be hard to believe for those of you in this room that are regulars at Greater Hope, but we're going to, by the grace of God, we're going to do 14 verses today. Um, and, and, and Candace is doubting me already, but we are. We're going, to, we're going to do it. And for no other reason than to prove Candace wrong at this point. Um, Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 1. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, uh, and communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them that were of, the, that were of reputation, lest by any means... I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who privily came to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seemed, to be, uh, who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me, uh, in me toward the Gentiles. Who, uh, excuse me, nine, verse 9. And uh, when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. Then we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Only they, only they would that uh, should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compellest the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for this time together. I pray that you bless it. I pray, God, that you're honored by it. I pray, God, that we, pray, God, that we preach not for the acceptance of men, 
But God, that you're glorifying through your word and through your preacher. I pray that you bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Earning freedom is the account of how the Cuban kingpin, Michael Santos, rebuilt his life. At the age of 19, he was sentenced to 45 years in prison for heading up an illegal drug organization. Inside this prison, he developed a plan to educate himself, network with a support group, and continue to contribute to the good of society as he prepared to enter the world again. He earned two degrees, built a website, wrote several, wrote several articles and books, helped other prisoners develop skills to cope with life in prison. And after serving 25 of his 45-year sentence, he was released and today continues to write and speak about the power of human determination and will. Santo's story is one of convict turned millionaire. Santo's story, though admirable, it is a story of self-salvation. While we should celebrate willpower and we should celebrate determination and perseverance, we, we have in this church a very diverse group. We have people in this church that have been through many different programs. Some were a success, some were not. We have in the church people that, that were confined to a prison cell. And in that prison cell, there were things that changed about them. Some willingly and some unwillingly. Some broken by the, by the sheer grace of God that God hadn't killed them yet. Some broken by the humanness behind being in, locked up in a prison cell, being in a cage. You see, I, I don't think that we should, I don't think that we should not celebrate the willpower, not celebrate the determination and perseverance. I do think, though, that we should recognize and identify how that the gospel radically redefines the role of human effort in salvation. Grace cannot be earned. It is a gift to all who believe. As great of a story as this is, and, and how many of you understand it's a great story? I, 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 there's more people in this room that could tell great stories. We, we've got people in this room that could stand up and tell some great stories about how the grace of God came in their lowest point. And we can rejoice in that and we can praise God in that. But I, I want you to understand society is enamored with these kinds of stories. Society is, is enamored with a, with a man that could pull himself up by the proverbial bootstraps and redeem his own self. You see, man for years has been trying his best and attempting at his best to redeem himself. Galatians, in your Bible, is to combat the self-salvation of, of, of these own men and their doings to earn their own salvation. Actually, Paul says in Galatians 1 and verse number 9, we've been there and we covered it for several weeks, anyone that has a different message than the message which I preach... Anyone that has a different gospel, another gospel than the gospel which has been preached, guess what? He should be accursed. You see, the, 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 the idea that a man can pull himself up by his own bootstraps is a, is a good idea. It's just not a God idea. Well, Brother Lee, I don't think you ought to dismiss any of that. I'm not dismissing it. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for determination. I'm grateful for willpower. I, 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 I am, am a man that lived a very unhealthy life for a number of years and just within the last five or six years have changed my life. And I, I, I don't know that I'm not going to sit here and say that God did it. I think that a lot of it was just sheer willpower and understanding that my body was the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
Did the Spirit of God do that? I don't know. I don't have a clue. I think it was, I think it was just the fact that I was determined. I was tired of being unhealthy. And, but, but here it is. It's a good story. It's just, it may not be a God story. Galatians, this Gala- the churches in the region of Galatia, they struggled to understand this. They struggled to understand how a man couldn't pull himself up by the bootstraps and earn the favor of God. Well, the Jews had been doing it for years. Paul recounted all of those, uh, th- those few events in his life. Those few events that brought him to this place to where, I mean, he, he, he went out on a limb and, and told them who he was that he persecuted that he persecuted them in times past and now he is preaching the faith that he was once against and once destroyed and here it is God is glorified through that God's glorified when you let out all of who you are and you let people see who you are in terms of of, of having some Humility so they can see, hey, this is who this guy was and God is the one that changed him. You see, it, 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 he, he goes on and, and he lets us know that the grace of God, that the grace of God was what changed his life, not him. I Man, I, I think that's a real... I think it's a real interesting deal. You say, why, why, do you, why do you think that? Well, in terms of chapter number 2, we find some guys in chapter number 2 that, that should have gotten what the Apostle Paul had gotten a hold of, but couldn't yet grasp it either. Uh, Peter should have gotten what the Apostle Paul had already gotten. Peter had the dream in Acts chapter number 10, man. Kill and eat. I mean, the best verse in all the Bible. I mean, let's kill it and let's grill it. And and, and Peter knew that. But Peter couldn't get in his mind that he didn't have to do things anymore to keep the grace of God. While Christians need not die on every hill, the truth of the gospel is worth worth dying for. The events Paul recounted here occurred during a a really sensitive time for this church, for these churches in this region. And as, as they expanded, opposition continued to arise, both from the inside and the outside. And Paul, here it is, Paul knew which battles to fight, which battles to fight, and which hills to die on, and which ones to let loose of. I heard Brother Mark say one time that he said there there was a weird shift. He said at one time, he said you used to have people that stood for the gospel and the truth of the gospel and they proclaimed the gospel. They proclaimed the word of God as it was word for word, line for line, precept upon precept. They proclaimed it, man. They preached it. And he said somewhere around the 20th century, people quit, quit standing for the truth of the gospel and started standing for other things that didn't mean anything. Like, standing for things like, every woman in the church better have a dress on. Standing for things like every man that stands in a pulpit ought to have a towel. Standing for things like, man, I, that, that, uh, it, the old preachers I used to be here called it can music. When, when you had a, uh, when, when music was played through the speakers, the uh, soundtracks that was played, they called it can music. Can music was wicked as hell. Preacher not wearing a tie, man, he, he ain't even called. He wouldn't know God in a 40-acre field with a name tag on. He don't even have a tie on. 
Well, look at her. Look at sister so-and-so. She's got to be a harlot. She ain't got a dress on. It never made sense to me. I'm a 24-year-old drunk. Almost divorced. Come to a church. And, 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 And listen, no joke. Never made sense to me. You got to wear a dress here. You, you, do you wear one to bed too? Well, if you got to wear a tie here to be a preacher, like, you cut grass in that joker too? Now, I'm, I'm just real practical at this point. I'm brand, I'm talking about brand new. Like, didn't even know not to. I mean, there's some things that just ought not be said in church, and I hadn't yet come to the place to where I, my filter ought not say them. I, I'm still I'm still detoxing pretty heavy from the course of the world that I traveled for a very long time, and 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 and, and, and you know it, it is interesting that we did leave the doctrinal side of the things that we stood for for a number of years leading up to the 20th century that then took a turn and it started to be little things that separated. It caused you to be separated. You see, the legalism has, has three faces to it. Three faces, and I, I, I learned these from Brother Mark, three faces that legalism has. Number one, you must do something to get saved. You must do something to get saved. And we could almost box in the little church of Christ there and, and when... The only way you can actually be saved is to be baptized. You must do something to stay saved. And we've talked about that in here. The different sacraments that you got to do in, in various religions to stay saved. And then here, 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 here this number three here, it'll, it'll lay out what we, know, uh, what we know to be the truth for Baptists. You must do something to be spiritual. You must do something to be spiritual. You see, what we do is we work real hard to make sure that we do something to be spiritual. We may, may not be a doctrinal thing that we're falling in trap, in, in trap to, but, but what we do is we work really hard as Baptists, you say, do, do, what, what do you know about Baptists? I know enough about Baptists to understand that you got to look spiritual or you're not. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, let me, I, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. The very first time I ever preached, the very first time I ever preached, I came into a church, and that, that morning, that, I mean, that night that I came into that church, I walked in, and, and the preacher said, where's your tie? And I didn't, I, my, my, my shirt that I had on was brand new. Like I just pulled it out of the wrapper. And I said, man, I, I don't got a tie. Well, you can't preach without a tie on. And we went back here in his office, and he's got like 45 ties hanging up on the back of his door. And I'm, man, I mean, we got, we got $1,000 worth of ties here. And I'm thinking, man, I, I don't have $1,000 to buy ties. And I'm, I'm sitting here, and I, he's putting this tie on me. And I got a shirt that has a design on it kind of like this. Well, all his ties were old man ties. And he's putting these ties on me, and I'm like, brother, it don't match. Well, it don't matter. All you got, you got to have a tie on. And you know, I felt, I felt, I felt, I felt, uh, I felt belittled. I felt like I was less than what I thought I was when I got there. I, I felt like that. Look, man, I, I'd already. I mean, I, I, I'd struggled to understand the love of God anyway. I struggled to understand and feel accepted by God anyway just because of who I was in the flesh. Just because how I'd been raised. I struggled with that. I struggled with the sins of my father. I struggled with all of that. And then, and then a man that I, I thought was on my side says, Man, you can't preach without a tie on. I don't got a tie. I don't want a tie. The tie's stupid. Well, that's what you're going to preach tonight. That's what you got to wear. 
I'm going to look at this town. I'm like, it's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. It looked like somebody on a bad acid trip. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I went up there, and I, I even made fun of a tie when I got up there. I'm like, look, I don't wear ties, but obviously he does, and he wants me to wear one. So I'm wearing one. May have been on the front. Now I look back at it. May have been a little bit disrespectful. But at the time, I got to do something to defend myself. Like, I can't let the whole world know I picked this out on purpose. It's real easy to do things to make you look spiritual. And your heart be as far from God as it possibly can be. I, I, I want to look at some practical truths, and, and I mean this, they're very practical. There's not going to be a whole lot of like doctrinal things that we dealt with in, 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 in chapter number 1, but there's some very practical things that I want you to see that, that I believe for this body of believers that I think could almost settle if not, if, if not completely eradicate any of the dilemmas that, that may seem to rise in, in your heart and in your mind about things that look spiritual, but in actuality they aren't. And are those things hills that you're willing to die on? Have you ever reckoned any of that in your heart? What is a hill I'm willing to die on? I got some hills I'm willing to die on, but there's some of them I'm not dying on. I'm not dying over a tie. I'm not dying over a dress. I, I will die over modesty. Because that's what the Bible says. <laughs> that that, that we, we do have to be modest, but we don't, we don't have to die over dresses. Like some of our, 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 our former peoples would have us do. Man, I just wonder how many years we lost waiting wading through the murky mess of looking spiritual and the gospel never being preached. I just wonder how many years did we squander away when we was in the, we, we was in the workplace with people and wouldn't invite people because they didn't look the part to be a part of that place. And you just knew they were going to rock the boat. You just knew when you said, oh man, no, you got to wear a suit. They was going to hang you the birds and walk off, brother. You said, you think people do that? I know people do that. They ain't stupid. Well, what, 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 we, we, we did that. <laughs> we'll just leave the implication there. You see, I, I, I think we need to reckon what hills we're willing to die on and the ones that we're not. So I want to give you some practical truths from these 14 verses. Number one, number one, choose your battles wisely. Choose your battles wisely. Verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and, and, and 2. We have... The Apostle Paul, and he says in verse number 2, I went up by revelation, so he went up by the Spirit of God revealing to him where he needed to go and communicated unto, unto them the, that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. But, but now get this, but privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now, when, when we're, we're talking about this whole thing, this is probably a reference that will take us back to Acts 15. We'll get there in just a minute, but it'll take us back to Acts chapter number 15. But understand, this is Paul, and he's got Barnabas, and he's got Titus with him. Now, Barnabas was on the very first missionary journey with him, and then Titus is, is, a, child, is a spiritual child of Paul, and now he's a fellow uh, a co-laborer in the work of the Lord with him. Now, make sure you understand this. Paul is an, I mean, Titus is an uncircumcised Gentile. Now, what, what we've got is we've got this, this council in Jerusalem. They are saying that Paul is not preaching the gospel like it ought to be preached. 
Well, well Titus is a, is a living, breathing example, proof of the effectiveness of Paul's ministry. Titus ain't just, Titus is just loaded up with Barnabas and Paul and said, let's go boys, this is worth fighting for. This is where, well, if Gentiles can get in like this, well then let's go. So what happens to Paul? Well, he, he goes up to the, he goes up to them in Acts chapter number 15. And, and it, it's, it's kind of it's crazy how this whole thing shakes out. Uh, those who were of reputation just so happens, just so happens that those of reputation in the midst of this whole thing is Peter, James, and John. Now, can you imagine being the Apostle Paul? And here he's hearing that Peter, James, and John, they're not tracking with what he's doing. But you know what? You know what Paul does? He reckons a worthy cause to fight for. Here it is, guys. We, in this church, are going to have to recognize there are battles worth fighting and we need wisdom to recognize them. Not only that, we, we need wisdom to recognize when to handle issues regarding the truth in, in a private setting or when to handle them publicly. We need, we, we need wisdom to do this, guys. See, here, here's, here's, how this, here's how this is going. Uh, Acts chapter 15 and, and verse number 1. Acts 15 verse 1, number 1, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and, uh, and certain of them should go up to Jerusalem under the apostles and the elders, uh, and the elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were coming to, Jer uh, to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and the apostles uh, of the of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God hath done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of Pharisees which believed, saying. This is needful to circum that it that it that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, now notice who we're dealing with. We're dealing with Pharisees which believed. We're dealing with Pharisees which believed. We're dealing with the Pharisees that came to faith in Christ, but they're still dealing with this whole thing of understanding. That they do not need circumcision. They do not need to keep the law. Verse 6, And the apostles and elders came together for to, uh, for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men, uh, unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of, uh, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, give them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither of our fathers nor we were able to bear. But we believed that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken ye unto me, Simeon hath declared, hath declared now how God at the first did visit the Gentiles 
to take, uh, to take out them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophet as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and I will build again the ruins thereof and I will set it up that the, the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all things. Verse 18, Known unto God are the works from the beginning of the world, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and fornication and from, and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen, chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surname uh, Barsabbas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. Now, I, I, I want you to notice, before we go to that number two, I want you to understand that Paul has decided that this is a worthy cause to fight for. This thing is worthy. What is this thing? It's salvation. It's gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's saved by faith. Through grace. That's what it is. And he understands that there are some things worth dying for. And this in, in, in the heart of the Apostle Paul. It is worth dying for. But now notice this. I want you to see this. Can you imagine? If, 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 if Go back with me just for a minute. And, and let's, go, let's go load up on Peter, James, and John. Let's, let's get them in the public eye. Let's get them in the public eye. Let's load up on them and, and, and let's get let's let's rail on them and say, boys, I tell you what, y'all y'all are wicked. You know that God's revealed this unto me. I, we've been down there preaching and God's been doing great things. And y'all are just y'all are just you, you're stuck in your ways and you're horrible. And you 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 need you need to get right with God and you need to do it now because we're going to keep doing what we're doing despite what you're what you're doing. Can you imagine if they'd have done that? Man, old Peter, we all, we all know, Peter ain't much on, on backing down from a good challenge. He's as stubborn as they come. And, and I don't know about you, I, I, but, but John's right there. Got to be pretty close. Got to be pretty close to them saying, no, I tell you what, you, you, right, wrong, or indifferent. No, Paul, we fix to cut your head off. You see, there's some things worth doing and even doing them in private. I had somebody come here years ago. They walked in the door. They was here like a week, two weeks. And they, they you know, they loved it. I said, man, we're, we're, we really love it. We want to join the church. I said, all right, well... You know, we need to talk about that first. Just joining the church around here is a pretty big deal. Uh, but, but you want to join the church? We, I need, I'd like to sit down and talk with you guys. And then the very next thing they said, and, and we, we want to get baptized. And I, I okay, well, we, we need to talk, and, and, and we'll sit down, and we'll talk. And, and, and we want our kids to get baptized, too. Well, we, now we got a lot to talk about. And I, I, I said, well, I said, so, you know, I'm, I felt like I'm, I'm being pressured pretty hard. I'm like, all right, well, look, we, let's go sit down right here. And so we sat down, and I'm like, so uh, I, the first, you know, the red flag that went off in my mind was the kids, obviously. They're, they're like four or five years old. And I'm like, so t tell me about when your kids got saved. Well, they, they ain't never been saved. We want to get them baptized, though. All right. Uh, uh, can you tell me about you getting saved? You know, I'm, I'm, uh, at this point, I'm like, oh, first, that's my first go around. 
And I'm, I'm not even real sure what to say other than just say it. And I said, well, I said, let's sit down. Me and you, we'll schedule a time. We'll get some lunch. We'll open the Bible. And we'll talk about all this if you want to. And we did that. And I went and sat down with those people and talked about the Bible. And we talked about the Word of God and what the Bible said about baptism and what it didn't say. And before this whole thing's over with, we're not getting kids baptized anymore. And then uh, I think the husband ended up getting saved in this whole thing because he realized, oh, well, I didn't know you had to be saved to get baptized. <laughs> Everybody evidently is just getting baptized. He said, well, how do you think that would have went if, it, if you'd have done, you know, some other way? Well, I'll tell you how to win. They'd have left out of here. Old, old, old boy would have never got saved. There's a lot of things that can happen with you and me in, in overload of the mouth in public that we could fix in private. Everything don't have to be publicized. As much as Facebook wants you to publicize it. And Twitter and Instagram and TikTok now. And what's that other one that I absolutely hate? Anybody know it? There we go. Number two, battle your choices relentlessly. Battle your choices relentlessly. But neither Titus... Who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy, spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom, we gave, uh, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Now understand this, this is all about the truth of the gospel. Why do we battle our choices? Why do we battle our choices relentlessly? The hill we die on, we must battle till we die. Till relentlessly we must battle. Why? Because the truth of the gospel is compromised when we don't. I, I, there's some things you don't have to back up on. There's some things that you don't have to give in to. As much as this lottie da lackadaisical mindset goes on in most churches with most preachers, and they say, well, just get, go, just get by, just do whatever you got to do to get by. No, we need some people that will battle to the end. I'm going to finish. Number three. Position your stand as a respecter of God's person's as God, of God's person, not man's. Position your stand as a respecter of God's person, not man's. Verse number 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat... Notice how he says a little sarcastic right there. Whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. Those who seem to be somewhat. And then he, he rolls out, you know, whatever they thought they were. God, accepts, God accepteth no man's person. Whatever they thought they were, God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. They that, they, they, you know, they, they that seem to be some, I mean, they rolled up and... and, and for those of you that have never been to a, to a legit IFB pastor's conference, you are really missing. They walk around with their chest bowed out. Well, hello, brother. How are you doing? You doing okay today? Yep. They'll roll. Hello, brother. How are you today? Nice tie you got on. <laughs> Everybody notices each other's tie for real. It's a weird deal. Uh, no, no joke. They pick it up, look at it. They even ask how much it costs. Craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. This is what Paul's dealing with. He's not dealing with people. He's dealing with people that think themselves to be somewhat. Somewhat, I, I mean, so much so. Paul says they, they, they're in a conference right now. They act like they're, they, act, they got their nose so... So high in the air, if it rains, they're going to drown. 
And he said, well, they, 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 they seem to be somewhat. And I'll be honest with you, I just wonder if part of, I, I wonder if this is old Peter, James, and John. I wonder if Peter, James, and John are walking around with this pious attitude. He says, they added, Paul says, they added nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter, for he, uh, for he that effectually, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in, in me toward the Gentiles. Notice this. Position your stand as a respecter of God's person, not man's. Don't get so caught up, and we do it around. We we're real adamant around here to make sure that we don't get caught up in me being something that I ain't. We went for years. And I know that's not good English, but you understand it here in Paulding County, uh, real good Paulding County language. We went four years elevating pastors to be somewhat. I mean, way up here, like they were, like they were closer to God than anybody else. Like they had more access to the throne of God than anybody else. Position your, position your stand as a respecter of God's person, not man's. Number four. Number four, stand in your position as a reproducer of, 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 of lives in God's image, not man's. Of lives in God's image, not man. Not man's. Position yourself in such a way, stand in your position in such a way that you are reproducing the life of God's image in another person. You know why decide, you know how discipleship gets derailed? It gets derailed when we start making it about men. This thing ain't about men. It's not about what a man looks like. What does God look like in that man? This is where we get so... This will be the downfall of our discipleship ministry at this church. If it falls, it will be because somebody got high and mighty and prideful and haughty and got a pious attitude about them and they thought, well, look at me, I'm a discipler. Friend, you ain't nothing but a scumbag that God saved. You don't deserve the grace of God and neither do I. You are one beggar telling another one where you got bread at. And the day that you get haughty and, and high and mighty and put up on your horse, here's what I know happens. Because God is God and if you are his child, son, the higher you get on that horse, the harder that fall is going to be. Well, how, how do you know that? Well, I fell off a few in my day. You, 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 if, if you, you think God's had to knock you back down, God's knocked me down, back down more than a few notches, more than a few times. Well, how do you get there? Well, you get there when you start looking at men and you get your eyes off God. You get there when you start looking at you and you forget that you are not conforming you to another man's image, to another Baptist. You are, conform, you are to be conformed to the image of God's Son, not another Baptist. Well, thought Paul said, be you followers of me as I follow Christ. Yeah, be you followers of him as he's following Christ. When he quits following Christ, when he quits being conformed to the image of Christ, guess what? You don't follow that mug no more. And what we did down through time is we started, well, we gotta look like the preachers, and we gotta, we gotta, we gotta look like you know, so and so, and we gotta sound like so and so. And and fortunately, uh, we have a real diverse group of people in this church, and so it does my heart really well that not everybody has to like the same thing, do the same thing, be the same thing for us to all come under the same umbrella of the grace of God and all of us love and worship God. Together. Amen. 
He says, man, here's the thing. Peter, God's working in Peter like he's working in me. God, the same power that's working in Peter is the same power that's working in me. And, and I don't have to be the same thing Peter is for God to really be working in me. You, you ever got there before? You ever got there and looked around and said, man, I wonder if God's working in me because I'm not the same as so-and-so? I did that for a number of years. As a young preacher, I, if, I, if, I didn't do, if, it, if I didn't have the same results as so-and-so had, I wondered if God was working in me. You may, not, you may get there in your Christian life, well, if I don't have the same results as so-and-so. But listen, the same God, if you're saved, you're surrendered, the same God that's working in so-and-so is the same God that wants to work in you. Verse number 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, received the grace uh, that was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go... To the heathen, under the heathen, and they only, and they, uh, excuse me, and they under the circumcision. They, they, they finally come to the place. Get, get this. What happened? They stood for something. They stood for something, and, and guess what happens? Finally, Paul, excuse me, finally, James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, they perceived the grace that was given unto me. They looked at me and they seen the grace of God given unto me. And they was like, okay, all right, boys, we, we see God working in y'all's life. So have at it. Go do what God has called you to do. Stand in your position as a reproducer of lives in God's image, not man's. Number five. Battle your stand in the authority of the Bible, yet with the love of Christ. Battle your stand in the authority of the Bible, yet with the love of Christ. This is an interesting set of verses right here. And, and I'll, I'll give you what happens and, and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. Verse number 11 but when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Now, now, verse number 10, we were getting the right hands of fellowship, right? Everybody was getting the right hands of fellowship in verse 10, but now verse number 11, man, I was stood this mug to the face. Why? Because some things are worth standing for. It is, is, it, we don't have drums, but, but if we had drums, it's... You willing to die over a set of drums? I, I, listen, man, you think this stuff's crazy, but I, I mean, there's a lot of people in this room who know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I mean, it, we, we, we withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. What was he to be blamed for? Well, notice what he was to be, what, what Paul was blaming him for. For before that certain came from James. For before that certain came from James, so there's some people coming from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. So before the, the people came from James, from Jerusalem, he's eating with Gentiles. Now this is the dude that was completely against everything Paul was for. But when they were come, those that came from James, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So he gave the right hands of fellowship and he said, go do your thing, I'm going to go do my thing. But now he understands that the two, though, are going to heaven. Circumcision is going to heaven, uncircumcision is going to heaven, and it's all made possible by Jesus Christ through the gospel, right? But I can't be seen eating with the people that I'm going to heaven with. What's the, what's the Jews eating? I don't know. I mean, Gentiles eating. I like to think they're probably eating, you know, they're probably eating ribs or something. I mean, Peter couldn't eat ribs for, for, for a long time. I and mean, we did have Acts chapter number 10, kill it and grill it. But, but Peter has forgot kill it and grill it is, is on the menu. And so he's now sat down with 
with, with, with these Gentiles and he's eating. But when he sees the people coming from Jerusalem, he withdrew himself and separated himself, fearing them which the circumcision. Verse 13. And other Jews disassembled likewise with him. So when they seen Peter leaving, other Jews, you know what they, whoop, 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 whoop. Well, wait a minute now. I thought we was all on the same page here. So he's carrying other people off with him. In so much that his right hand man, Paul's right hand man, that was on the first missionary journey to the Gentile world. Barnabas has seen God save no telling how many gut rot dog Gentiles. In so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. I, I, now Barnabas is is, is leaving. He, he's gone. He he's I don't know where Peter went, but but they're all they're, they're somewhere eating, and Peter sees them come up. He he hears he hears the chariots come up, and he hears from the voice. He hears that all oh, that they're from James, and and. and Peter's, Peter was eaten. Now Peter's all, whoa. All right, boys, I'll catch y'all in a little bit. <laughs> well, there, there comes the rest. Of, oh, well, we got to go too. And then here comes old Barnabas. He's following. He said, whoa, wait. What? Paul's sitting around like, all these months, where are they going? I mean, my old man, Barnabas, he's leaving me. What's, ha- what's happening right now? So Paul... Paul has to really bear down right here, but he says in verse 14, when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Wait a minute. You're telling me that this had to do with the truth of the gospel? Yeah, friend, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Let it click. Let it click in your mind. For the truth of the gospel, I thought the truth of the gospel was a death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you must receive that for what it is, for the payment and the atonement of your sin. That's true. But Paul knew that what they were doing was going to affect the truth of the gospel. Paul knew it. Peter, you are are jacking up the truth of the gospel right now. Barnabas, you're jacking up what we've been preaching, man. You're jacking up the truth of the gospel right now. He said, I said unto Peter before them all. (laughs) Now we done went public. We went from private. Joker, I done got you privately in a setting. And we talked about all this stuff. To now, we facing a hunker down. In the public... If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? Why, why Peter, why, you're, you're sending mixed signals here. I, I didn't think we, I, didn't, I thought we were, we were different. I thought we already hashed this out. I thought Acts 15, this whole thing, I thought we already did that, Peter. I thought that we got this thing settled, and I thought that it was... Now, now here it is. Battle your stand. There's some things worth dying for. What are those things worth dying for? Let me, I didn't even realize it until just within the short, a short while ago, within the last couple of years, that what happens in terms of those faces of legalism, things you must do to be saved, things you must do to stay saved, and things you must do to look spiritual, they really affect the truth of the gospel. They really do affect the way people see how the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached. And then this, how it's received. And then this, how it's kept. It really does affect it. Peter is affecting the gospel. The truth of the gospel. Why? Because he's saying one thing and he's doing another. Because he's talking out of both sides of his mouth.
because pastor so-and-so showed up at the church. He just showed up unannounced. Pastor so-and-so, he showed up unannounced. I dragged Daniel off in the back. I said, hey man, listen. I know we've been singing. I know we've been singing that goodness of God and and we sang Amazing Grace and, you know, that one with the chains in it. We got to do away with that. We got to go, we got, is it, uh, what is it? What page is it? We got to go back to 57. We, we, you got to sing 57. You know what I'm Man, that dude back there in the back, he is going to be so ticked off at me when we get done. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna ring me out. He's going to talk about, and he's going to talk about you. And then when he leaves here, he's going to get on Facebook, and he's going to talk about a whole church. Right. So we got to make sure that we appease that dude in the back. And then Daniel looks at me and says, "Oh, oh brother, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to be mean or try to come against you, but do you do you have any Bible for that?" No, Daniel, I don't, man. I just don't want. I don't want. I don't want them talking about it. So you'd rather you'd rather not do what we normally do, and you don't have an ounce of Bible for it. No, man. Let's just get by this time. We'll talk about it when it's over with. Man, I just come on. You pray for me. I just don't feel. Brother Daniel says I just don't feel good about that. Do you feel okay about that? Well, now I got this big knot in my gut right now. He's even back there to begin with. I don't feel good about anything right now. But it's just what we need to do to make sure that everything's up. And Brother Daniel, one more time, he says, man, I just don't know. I, I just don't know it's the right thing to do. You know what Daniel did? He come at me with the authority of the Bible. And he did it in love. Man, Brother Lee, I, I, I get it. I just ain't, I, I just don't think we got any scriptural grounds to change what you're talking about changing right now. See, I think if, if we're not careful, we're going we're gonna to get ourselves, if we're not careful in, in mainstream Christianity, we're going to box ourselves in. It's going to build, we're going to build a little box. And we're going to make the opening in the shape that we want it to be in to make sure every person that comes to this church has got to fit in that mold. Friend, I want you to listen to me right here. You may not like everything that goes on in this church. You may not like all the people in this church. You may not like the way I do everything. You may not like it. But I've gotten old enough to where my that little thing inside of me that used to care a whole lot somewhere along the lines it broke. I got, me, I got me a Bible and I got a real good grip on it. I got a real good grip on what, what I believe in the Bible and what the Bible says and I come to the place to where those things that, that I may not even like in this church. There's something, I'm not everything, I'm, I'm not saying, I don't, every song we sing, I'm just not like over the moon for it. I mean, just truthfully. Well, why are we singing it if you don't like it? Because I'm not the dictator. My kids may like it. My wife may like it. You may like it. Well, really, I just don't think we ought to do stuff that you don't like. Well, it don't matter what you think. Because it don't matter what I think. If God, if God don't have nothing to say about it, then I ain't got nothing to say about it. 
We got to quit speaking where God ain't speaking. We spoke too long about things that God ain't said a word about. Battle your stand in the authority of the Bible. Yet with the love of Christ. Let's do this. Every head bowed. I don't ever want to miss an opportunity to give you. I don't ever want to miss an opportunity to give you a moment to where you can think about this thing of salvation. Maybe you're in here and, and uh, say, Brother Lee, I, I don't really have any assurance of my salvation. I, if I die right now, I don't have any assurance of my own personal salvation. I've never came to the place to where I trusted the gospel for my salvation. I haven't placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ alone to save my soul. And right now, Brother Lee, I, in my heart, if you ask me, in my heart, if you die right now, do you have assurance of your salvation? In my heart, I don't. And I'd like for you to pray for me this morning. All I want you to do is pray for me. Would you slide your hand up long enough for me to see it? Slide it right back down. I, ju I just, I sincerely, I'm just going to pray for you. Slide it up, slide it right back down. All right? It'd be another one. Just slide it long enough for me to see it. Slide it right back down. All right? Maybe there's somebody else in here and, and, and you say, Brother Lee, God really spoke to me uh, about some things in my own life and, and some things I need to stand for and some things I need to just not, not even, I got to quit worrying about. Maybe that's you. You slide your hand up right there. You say, pray for me, Brother Lee. Some God's dealing with me about some things I got to stand for in my own life. All right. I see them. Amen. 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 Here's what we're going to do. We're going to let Brother Daniels, we're going to let Brother Daniels sing uh, a verse and a chorus. I will give you an opportunity. You're in here and you're lost. You say, Brother Lee, pray for me. Uh, I, I'm going to pray for you. But you're in here and, and uh, after I pray, you want to you wanna get out of your seat. I'd love to take a Bible and show you what it means to be saved. You're in here. You got any need at all. Any need at all. You need somebody to pray with you. We'll do that this morning. You got something going on in your life. You need somebody to pray. We'll do that this morning. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you bless this time we had together. Bless those that are here. Uh, God, that may be lost. Lord, that are, that are struggling with their own salvation. And, and you know, the, the thought of eternity literally scares them to death. I pray, God, Lord, is, is maybe their heart may be beating out of their chest right now. I pray, God, in Jesus' name, Lord, that you bring them to a place of humility. Lord, to where they will let go and, and, and they will... They will they will come to a place where they can accept you for who you are in your death, burial, and resurrection. Lord, I pray that you bless those that may have, that raise their hands for various reasons. Lord, those that, that need to come, Lord, I, I pray that you give them a time in this altar, Lord, to where it's peaceful. And God, they can unload some of their, their own life here in this altar. Lord, I, I pray that you bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Daniel, you sing right there. Let's do this. Let's stand all over the room. If you need to come, you need to just slide out of your seat. Find your place. Find your place here in this altars. If you need somebody, somebody will pray with you. Whatever you need, you come on. Make it count, leave a mark, build a name for yourself. Dream your dreams, chase your heart above all else. Make a name the world remembers. All an empty world can sell his empty dreams. I got lost in the lie that it was up to me to make a name the world remembers. And Jesus is the only answer. And I, I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if they
I lead every sick and poor to him. Only Jesus. All the kingdoms built and all the trophies won crumble into dust when it's said and done. Is all that really matters. Did I live the truth to the ones I love? Was my life the proof that there was only one whose name will last forever? And I, I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if they remember me. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. All the kingdoms built and all the trophies won will crumble into dust when it's said and done. Cause all that really matters. Did I live the truth to the ones I love? Was my life the proof that there is only one whose name will last forever? Everything you can to forget everything in terms of pain and anguish and heartache that the Lord might bring up even in a service like this that he wants to expose to try to help relieve man we will just man, we'll get on a social media site We'll go to texting somebody. We'll go to get, get go home. We want to go eat. We want to go here. We want to go there. And just an attempt to get the noise, to get the noise of God's word out of our heads. You say, well, we don't all do that. Well, there's probably some in here that do. I, I don't want you to. I don't want you to think because we're in here and it, it's a little past your normal time that anybody's worried about it being past normal time. If God's in with your heart, I'm begging you, do some, do some business with the Lord this morning. I, I, I'm, we're going to do, uh, we'll do one more verse. I, I promise you that'll be it. You don't come, I'm praying, and I am going to eat. You know, one more verse. You want to come, you come on. Make it count, leave a mark, build a name for yourself. Dream your dreams, chase your heart above all else. Make a name the world remembers. And all an empty world can sell is empty dreams. I got lost in the lie that it was up to me. Make a name the world remembers. Jesus 
is the only name to remember. And I, I don't want to leave a legacy. I don't care if they remember me. Only Jesus. Because I second point to heal only Jesus all right let's pray father thank you for this day uh, Lord again thank you for being real to us thank you for the spirit of God that's worked in this place I pray God that uh, Lord everything said and everything done was to edify you and uh, in your name in this church I pray God that you bless it pray God that you thank you for it. Uh, thank you for these families that are here today that, uh, that came on behalf of, of uh, Tori and Dylan. Uh, God, we, we love them and we're so grateful, God, that you've, uh, you've brought them into our lives. And Lord, we're grateful that, that you have these people here to back them. And uh, Lord, it, it is a blessing to see this kind of support in this day. And uh, God, I, I pray that you bless them for being here today. Uh, Lord, help us as we go. Give us a good afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen.